SpaceX launches crew mission and ACES booster landing, ESA opens door to commercial cargo transportation, and Virgin Orbit shuts down after filing for bankruptcy. It's Thursday, the 25th of May, and there's much more to come this week in spaceflight. Hey everyone, I'm Alicia Siegel for NSF, and welcome to This Week in Spaceflight, where we go over the latest news and launches that have happened during the week. ESA is seeking offers for commercial cargo transportation to low Earth orbit. The European Space Agency sent out a call for proposals this week for what it calls the Commercial Cargo Transportation Initiative. Under this new initiative, ESA would partner with and support private companies to help develop commercial cargo transportation to the International Space Station as well as future commercial low Earth orbit destinations. This initial call for proposals would help the agency gather information about the technological readiness of private space companies in Europe willing to support future human operations in space. This is in line with ESA's shift over the last few years towards opening themselves up for more public-private partnerships and the commercialization of space. This mimics the efforts made by NASA in 2005 with its Commercial Orbital Transportation Services, or COTS, program, which then branched into the Commercial Resupply Services and Commercial Crew programs. It definitely wasn't easy for NASA, so we're wishing good luck to ESA on their efforts. We definitely need more space in space. SmallSat air launch provider Virgin Orbit has sold off a variety of its assets, including the star of the show, the Boeing 747-400 Cosmic Girl. Virgin Orbit announced last month that it had filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy and laid off 85% of their 800 employees. All of this came after spending 1 billion US dollars on the development of their rocket Launcher 1 and their air launch system registered November 744 Victor Golf. After a month of seeking out buyers, the company has finally announced it is ceasing operations, and the majority of its assets have been auctioned to three space companies, Rocket Lab, vast new acquisition Launcher, and fellow air launch provider Stratolaunch. Rocket Lab bid 16.1 million US dollars for Virgin Orbit's main production facility, one building of which is literally across the road from Rocket Lab's factory in Long Beach, and the other of which is just down the road next door to Long Beach Airport. CEO Peter Beck announced on Twitter that the acquisition would help to advance Neutron's future production and reduce the overall cost of the program. On the other hand, Launcher bid 2.7 million US dollars for Virgin's lease of a test site at Mojave, along with machinery and inventory situated at the air and spaceport. The company will likely use the site to test Launcher's E2 engine for sale to other companies. And finally, Stratolaunch, known for flying big airplanes, of course bought Virgin Orbit's big airplane, Cosmic Girl. The purchase cost 17 million US dollars, practically a steal for Stratolaunch, who may use it in support of its hypersonic test vehicle program. It's always sad to see a space company go, especially one that was looking across borders. But it's a good reminder that if rocket science is hard, rocket business is even harder. Next up, let's go over this week in launches. SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket on May 20th at 1316 UTC from Vandenberg, carrying 21 satellites for Iridium and OneWeb. Of the 21 satellites launched, 5 of them were spare Iridium next satellites, 15 were spare OneWeb first generation satellites, with a 16th OneWeb satellite named JoeySat. JoeySat will serve to demonstrate key technologies for OneWeb's second generation constellation. One of these, known as beam hopping, is the reason for the name of the satellite. The mission marked the second time SpaceX used the short MVAC nozzle extension and also served as a new pad turnaround record at just over nine days. The booster, B-1063, was flying for an 11th time and successfully landed on the drone ship Of Course I Still Love You. Over on the other side of the world, China successfully launched a Chongzheng 2C rocket on May 21st at 8 o'clock UTC from the Jiuqin Satellite Launch Center. It carried the MUST-1A and 1B satellites, as well as the Lucia-201 satellite. The MUST satellites are magnetosphere research satellites from the Macau University of Science and Technology. The Lucia-201 satellite is an Earth Observation Synthetic Aperture Radar satellite with a 50 centimeter resolution built by Wuhan University. This week, Roscosmos launched a Soyuz 2.1A rocket carrying the Progress MS-23 spacecraft to the International Space Station. 
Liftoff occurred on May 24th at 12.56 UTC from Launchpad 6 at Site 31 of the Baikonur Cosmodrome. The spacecraft later docked to the ISS Poisk module the same day at 16.18 UTC, taking just two orbits to reach the station. Progress MS-23 carried about three tons of fuel, supplies, and hardware to support the current Expedition 69 crew. It should remain docked to the station until November. South Korea launched their KSLV-2 rocket on May 25th at 9.24 UTC from the Naro Space Center. It carried the Nexat-2 satellite and a few other rideshare payloads. The Nexat-2 satellite is a microsatellite intended to be used for X-band radar technology demonstration. Along for the ride were the Snipe A, B, C, and D CubeSats that will be used to measure the variation of small-scale plasma structures in the ionosphere and magnetosphere. Of course, one of the big launches this week was the launch of the Axiom-2 mission on SpaceX's Falcon 9 rocket. The mission carried astronauts Peggy Whitson, John Schaffner, Ali Alkarni, and Rayana Barnawi to the ISS. Liftoff was almost aborted due to bad weather. But it ultimately launched on May 21st at 21.37 UTC from Launch Complex 39A in Florida. The mission was SpaceX's first crewed flight featuring a return to launch site landing for the first stage booster. SpaceX confirmed prior to the mission that this was thanks to data gathered during Starlink missions about the performance available on Falcon 9. To optimize the performance, B-1080, the booster supporting the mission, performed a single engine entry burn instead of a three engine entry burn. The landing was also then carried out with a three-engine landing burn rather than a single engine. Now it's called a three-engine landing burn, but it actually only uses the three engines for a short time, as the booster slams on the brakes to then touch down on a single engine. So this return profile reduces propellant consumption, which translates into more performance that can be used for pushing the second stage and therefore take heavy payloads like Crew Dragon all the way up into orbit safely. Crew Dragon Freedom, the capsule used on this mission, was flying for a second time, having flown previously on the Crew 4 mission last year. It docked to the Zenith port of the ISS Harmony module on May 22nd at 1312 UTC. This made it the fastest launch to docking time by any SpaceX Crew Dragon, breaking the record by 9 minutes, which was set by, ironically, itself on the Crew 4 mission. Axiom-2 therefore becomes SpaceX's 10th human spaceflight mission and adds another four people sent into orbit to their ranks, for a total of 38. With this launch, Peggy Whitson became the first female commander of a private space mission and gets to add at least 10 more days to her already record-breaking 665 days in space. Rayana Barnawi now also becomes the first female Arab astronaut to go into orbit and, along with Al Carney, they're both now the first two Saudi astronauts to visit the ISS. Axiom-2 will remain on the station until at least May 30th, weather pending, when they'll undock and return to Earth for a splashdown off the coast of Florida. Now you might have noticed lately that here at NSF we've been trying to up our game. And that is all thanks to your support and the help of our sponsors. So today's video is sponsored by you! You can support us not only through YouTube memberships and Super Chats, but also through our merch store. So maybe you want to support the Axiom crew with a cool new human spaceflight tee, or you know we've also got a really cool section on the site where we've introduced something else pretty sweet, metal prints. You know, we've got so many talented photographers though that have shot so many really printable photographs for you to hang on your wall, but we're kind of running out of room. So we are marking some of them as last chance because, well, at some point we've just got to make room for even more new cool prints. So. Heads up, these items are going to be disappearing from our store on June 11th. So if you've ever wanted to hang them on your wall, now is your last chance, hence the name, and you are gonna have until that day, June 11th, to grab them for yourself one last time. So the link for this promotion should appear over here and also in the description, or you can also head over to shop.nasaspaceflight.com and look it up yourself. Coming up next week, Buckle up, because we have, yet again, lots and lots of launches. The launch of a Falcon 9 carrying the Arabsat 7B satellite was delayed both on May 24th and May 25th. A new tentative launch date is set for May 26th, within the same 2 hour 7 minute window that opens at 325 UTC. However, bad weather still remains a watch item. It's not just electrons coming to a storm near you. Sometimes, the storms come near electrons. 
Rocket Lab has had quite a string of bad luck with the weather lately as it tries to launch their mission carrying the last two tropic satellites for NASA. After delaying on May 22nd, 23rd, 24th, and 25th, a new launch date has been set for May 26th within a 70-minute window that opens at 3.30 UTC. A Soyuz 2.1A with a Frigate M upper stage is set for launch from Vostochny carrying the Condor FKA No. 1 satellite to sun-synchronous orbit. Liftoff is scheduled to occur on May 26th at 21.14 UTC. A GSLV Mark II is set for launch from the second launch pad at the Satish Devarn Space Center carrying the NVS-01 satellite to geostationary transfer orbit. Liftoff is scheduled to occur on May 29th at 5.12 UTC. This next week, China plans to launch the next crew rotation mission to the Chinese space station, the Shenzhou-16 mission. Liftoff of the Chongzheng 2F rocket carrying Shenzhou-16 is set for May 30th at 1.28 UTC from the Jiuqin Satellite Launch Center. Docking to their space station should occur a few hours after launch. It's expected that the crew will remain on board for the next six months with the previous crew rotation mission, Shenzhou-15, coming back to Earth a few days after the arrival of Shenzhou-16. It's another week, so we should expect another Falcon 9 launch by SpaceX no earlier than May 30th within a roughly 4-hour window that opens at 10.42 UTC. The mission, Starlink Group 64, will carry another batch of Starlink V2 mini-satellites into orbit. The mission is flying from the same pad as Arabsat 7B, so the time margins may be tight, so don't be surprised if there's a delay. In any case, you'll know if it launches or not because we'll be live-streaming it when it happens. We should also see another Starlink launch from Vandenberg before the end of the month, but no date or time are out for it yet. Stay tuned to our channel and news site to find out more about it next week. Now you might notice this week we're publishing on Thursday rather than Friday. We're always trying out new things and this is just one of them. So let us know in the comments what you think. We definitely appreciate your feedback. And that's your weekly update of Spaceflight News. We'll see you all again next week to recap this week in Spaceflight.